Hey guys, welcome back to the Blackwell Convergence. Well, would you look at that? Where are we? I actually don't know. I'm a little reminded of Trüberborg, but that game was released way after. But it doesn't really matter. We are here on a strange limbo, it seems. And the first thing that we are going to do is we're going to talk to Madeline. She's so strange and beautiful. Madeline, could I talk to you? Yes, please. Of course. Where are we? Where are we? You have been to this plane before. You have brought many lost spirits through here. Well, yes, but there was never a diner before. <laughs> I can understand your confusion, but it is not a real diner. It is metaphorical. As you know, there is a bond between the Countess and her current host, and the bond is represented by this diner. You will find out more inside. Mm-hmm. Why a diner? Why is it represented by a diner? The Countess used to spend lots of time in diners like these. You will find out more inside. Mm-hmm. Breaking the bond. This bond. How do I break it? Part of the Countess is trapped inside. You must find it and remove it. Mm-hmm. Breaking the bond? This bond. How do I break it? Part of the count. Okay, we have that already. How did the bond break? How did the Countess break the bond between you? She did not break the bond, but moved it. To be rid of me, she had to form a bond with someone living. Someone who could, in essence, become her guide. How she acquired this knowledge, I do not know. I only know that it was accomplished. Who did she pass it to? Joe Gould. It was an easy task, since his mind was already broken. Uh -huh. Upon Gould's death, it was passed on to Joseph Mitchell. Uh -huh. And now Charlie Meltzer. Yes, it must be broken if this is to end. Okay, that makes se uh, in a sense, it makes sense. You know what I'm talking about. Uh, is the Countess insane? How did the Countess get so... Insane? Yes. Like you, her mind is a door to another plane of existence. By corrupting our bond, she opened that door so wide that it flooded her mind with unfathomable knowledge. She essentially has the universe inside her head, and no human mind can contain that. It broke her. She sees everything but understands nothing. If mm. she didn't banish me to this place between worlds, I might feel more pity. Huh, who was the Countess? Did you know her when she was alive? Of course. We spent almost 30 years together. What was she like? Different. Happier. She loved helping those in need. But it no longer matters. She is the one who needs help now. Hmm, breaking this the bond. bond. Yeah, okay, we had that already. Thanks, Madeline. I'm going to see what I can do. I will be waiting right here. Okay, so this is something that can happen to us. I don't like that one bit, I have to say. But I guess we will have to accept that. So there is nothing we can do except... I guess that's the way inside. Yeah, we're gonna take that way. So let's go inside. For the upteenth time, I have no money for your fund. Show some pity. At least lend us a cigarette. Ahem. I believe we got company. Ah. Mm -hmm. Miss, could you perhaps spare a few dollars for the Joe Gould Fund? <sighs> Hmm, okay, so... Uh, there are no hands on that clock. Interesting. I guess that's supposed to be symbolic. Mm -hmm. What would I do with a handless ghost clock? Okay, before we talk to these guys... I'm a long way from home. I don't think those open. We could leave if we want to. There's that door. There's another door, so maybe we can go inside even more. This is Joe and this is Joseph, okay. That's Joe Gould. I recognize him from the portrait in the Minetta. So let's talk to him. Hello. Hello. My name is Joseph Ferdinand Gould. I am graduate of Harvard Magna Cum Difficultate and chairman of the board of Wheel and Woe Incorporated. In exchange for a drink, I'll recite a poem, deliver a lecture, argue a point, or take off my shoes and imitate a seagull. Okay. I prefer gin, but beer will do. I've been hearing a lot about you lately. My reputation precedes me. It indeed does. Okay, let's start with the Minetta portrait. I saw your portrait in the Minetta. The Minetta. Yes. I'm quite famous there, you know. I gathered. It's all thanks to Mitchell, of course. The Joe Gould Fund filled its coffers nicely when he wrote his article. Uh-huh. Why are you here? What are you doing here? I don't quite know myself. 
We've all got to be someplace. As I understand it, I was mentally linked to my old friend, the Countess. I wish I'd known. It explains everything that my work was trying to prove. Mm-hmm, his work. Your work. I have had many callings. I studied the seagulls of the world and learned their language. I spent months measuring the heads of 1,000 Chippewa Indians. But before I died, I was putting to paper the most important literary work known to man, the oral history of our time. It was a compilation of the conversations of the city, overheard in bars, subways, street corners, and diners. Put together and studied properly, it would have revolutionized everything. Mm-hmm. Revolutionized everything? How would it have revolutionized everything? We were all connected, every single one of us. But how? Think of the ramifications if we found out. It sounds like quite an undertaking. It was my life's work. Hmm. Okay, it's a little cheesy, but I get where he's coming from. The Countess. How did you know the Countess? We met in a diner like this one. We'd often spend a week or two walking along the docks to discuss seagulls. She had many interesting theories on seagull linguistics. Then, <laughs> one day, she disappeared. But a link had already formed between us. It's everything my oral history was trying to prove. That we were all linked. Mm-hmm. Murders. The Countess is killing people. Murder? No. No, I refuse to believe that. She couldn't turn a fly. Mm-hmm. The Countess's name. Why is she called the Countess? That's what she chooses to call herself. Far be it for me to tell her otherwise. The name doesn't seem strange to you? When you lived a life like mine, you take people at face value. Who cares about names? I once knew another fellow without a name. Called himself the Deacon. Oh, okay. The, we know that one too. The Deacon? You knew the Deacon? Oh yes. He was this gloomy career drunk. One summer night while sitting in a doorway, he looked up and saw the devil himself standing over him. Since that night, he believed he lost his soul. Not the most charitable drinking companion, if I may say so. No, no, he wouldn't be. You knew him? Sort of. Fancy that. Okay, I don't think I clicked. It just hopped. So I think it's it was just a bug, but I'm sorry, guys. You might want to rewind and pause if you want to know what he said, but I guess we got the gesture anyway. So let's talk about Mitchell. What's your connection to Joseph Mitchell? Ah, uh, Mitchell. My benefactor. He made me quite famous, you know. But my goodwill only extends so far. Why's that? A cigarette. He has them. He won't give me one. It's demeaning to have to beg for one meaty cigarette. Cigarette? You want a cigarette? Yes, I want a cigarette. It's a disgrace that I should have to beg for one. You want a cigarette? Yes, I want a cig- Okay, so we want to have a cigarette for him. But we're gonna go with oral history first. I'd like first. to read the oral history. And I'd like you to, but I'm afraid it belongs to the ages now. There was also the problem of it never existing in the first place. Of course it existed, only not on paper. It was over three million words, three times the size of the Holy Bible. The work transcended mere parchment and ink. What about those essays you published in the dial? A passing fancy, nothing more. You wrote essays? For the now defunct dial magazine. I still have the originals. Do you want to see? Mm, yes. I'd like to see that essay. Here you go. It appears to be an essay about insanity, but the handwriting is so awful I can barely make it out. Just as well. I don't have time to read all this stuff. Hmm. This handwriting makes my eyes water, but I think it's an essay about insanity. Okay. I don't think it's important. This handwriting makes my eyes... Yeah, okay, all right. So, hmm, there's a stain here and a paper clip. These papers are held together by a paper clip. Can we take it? I don't think miss this. Okay, we could take it. Huh, okay. Here you go. Always glad to share. Okay, so we stole his Mr. paper clip. Gould? She returns. Say, can you spare a few dollars for the Joe Gould Fund? I'm afraid I'm a little short. Fair enough, fair enough. Okay, so he still wants a cigarette. I'd like to see... Okay, we can have a look at the... Uh, essay if we want to. Always glad to share. Okay, what about you, Mr. Mitchell? Hello. You're Joseph Mitchell, aren't you? I believe you have the better of me, miss. Blackwell. Rosangela Blackwell. Blackwell, huh? I might have known. Hmm. Auntie Lauren. You met my auntie. Your auntie. 
Yes, I do see a slight resemblance. I did warn her to leave well enough alone, but she was determined. Let's hope that you can do some good here. Mm-hmm. Why are you here? What are you doing here? We are Echoes. Leftovers, if you will. We were linked to the Countess when we were alive. When we died, part of ourselves got trapped here. So you're not a ghost? Not fully. I'm not sure what I am. I remember living. I remember dying. But I don't feel like Joseph Mitchell. All I know is that when I thought of death, an eternity with Joe Gould was the last thing on my mind. Mm-hmm. The Countess. What is your connection to the Countess? I don't know. I never met the woman. Joe Gould was the one who knew her. He had a special bond with her, apparently. But somehow, he passed it on to me when he died. Next thing I knew, I was murdering people by writing about them. There was no choice. I had to stop writing. Mm -hmm. uh, if you want to know the story, you will have to, uh, you will have to watch the let's play of Blackwell Unbound. It's called, I think. You will find it on my channel. It's the one with Auntie. It's the one before this one. So you will check that out if you want to. Uh, his work. I studied some of your work in journalism school. Now that's just foolish. I was a relic even before I died. The city I wrote about has long since evolved and changed into something completely different. But that's New York City, isn't it? Wouldn't be New York if it stayed the same year to year. Hmm, his writing. I'm sorry you had to stop writing. So am I. But what else could I do? Let innocent people die? No, I don't regret the choice I made. Not for one moment. Mm hmm. Charles Meltzer. Did you know Charles Meltzer? Yes, I did. He worked at the New Yorker back in the late 70s. He would come into my office and ask about the old days, and I was happy to tell him. I knew he would never cut it as a reporter, but he had a very keen analytical mind. I almost forgot all about him, but it appeared a link formed between us nonetheless. When I died, my connection to the Countess passed on <coughs> to him. Mm-hmm, murders. Charles Meltzer is using the Countess to kill people. By accident? No, on purpose. He sent her after me. Now, that's a shame. I'm aware that through my actions I killed a few people, but I could forgive myself for it since I was unaware of what I was doing. But many times I thought to myself, I have a weapon. It's untraceable. Nobody knows about it. I could use it, but I did not. I was tempted, but I did not. Not once. You have to stop, Charles. Break this link. Destroy this place. No more innocents should have to die. Hmm, breaking the link. How do I break this link? I wish I knew. I'm afraid all this is a bit beyond me. I actually didn't understand how to do it. Madeline told us, but I actually didn't understand. So we're just going to take a look around, but we're going to finish talking to Joseph first. Why did you write about Joe Gould? He's a fascinating man. Intolerable company, but fascinating. He exemplified everything about New York at the time. Its artistic expression, its frustration, its joy and heartbreak. His oral history, or the idea of it, energized the work of dozens of writers and intellectuals. But the more I got to know him, the less I wanted to be around him. Mm-hmm. The oral history. Did you ever read Joe Gould's oral history? That, it never existed. Or if it did, Mr. Gould never shared it with anyone, which amounts to the same thing. You know why I never wrote it down. People would have died. You didn't stop telling people you were writing it, did you? What could I say? The truth? They would have chucked me in a loony bin. <laughs> Cigarettes. Why don't you give him a cigarette? When you give that man a cigarette or a drink, he likes to talk. And the only subject Joe Gould likes to talk about, at length, is Joe Gould. And the only person for him to talk to is me. So, I do not give him a cigarette. Hmm, you can speak to Gould. Would you give him a cigarette if I spoke to him for you? I might, I might. If you can get him away from me, I might. But we can't leave this diner, and the door to that kitchen is locked. Can't you just float through the wall? Believe me, I've tried that. It doesn't work. Not here. Uh huh. Would you give him a cigarette? I'm not. Okay, you, can't so you just believe me. Okay, we he will give him a cigarette. Thanks for talking, Mr. Mitchell. I'll see what I can do. Thank you, Miss Blackwell. So he will give him a cigarette if we can open this kitchen door. And I think I have a feeling how to do that. Looks like the door to the kitchen. Locked. Yeah, of course it is. But we got. It's a, a paper clip. Yeah, we good got for clipping papers. As well as picking locks. Yeah, she also says it, so... Easy. What's that noise? Uh, okay. That's not the least bit creepy. It's not. I swear. Uh, okay. 
That oven is closed. There's nothing in here. Yeah, I know it's this one because there is something in here, but... That oven is closed. There's nothing in here. Yeah, we can't do anything else, so let's open here. That's weird. There's a strange glow coming from inside. There's a strange glow coming from inside. Hello? Is someone in there? She comes, she comes. Who are you? Who are you? Part of a hole. Left behind. Safe here. Leave me. Who are you? Part of a hole. Left okay. safe. Leave me. Are you the Countess? Are you the Countess? Countess, one of my names. Yes. I no longer live, but part of me remains. Leave me. Oh, I need to take you out of here. I need to take you out of here. No. Save here. Warm here. I stay in warm places. Too cold out there. What if we take the light? My hand goes right through it. No. Too cold. I will survive here and save fire. Leave me. Oh. I need to take you out of here. Okay, okay, so well, that won't um, help. See ya. I'm talking to an oven. A sound idea. I'm sure it made more sense than most people I know. So this is the kitchen. Such a bare and emotionless place. Not even a bottle of ketchup. Okay, so we could talk to him. Let's do that. Mr. Gould. He returns. Say, can you spare a few dollars? I'm yeah, afraid. okay. Uh, oven. Does something about that oven look strange to you? Nothing about my life has ever made sense. Why should an oven be any different? Hmm, I'll talk to you later. In. Sure, sure, sure. Things to do, people to see, I understand. Okay, let's open the door now. And talk to Joseph that we opened the kitchen door. Mr. Mitchell? Yes. Uh, Gould is in another room. The oven in the kitchen is talking. We're gonna talk Listen about now. the oven This first. doesn't surprise you. Miss, look where we are. I stopped being surprised ages ago. Gould has left the room. I see. Thank you for that. Have you reconsidered giving him a cigarette? I suppose I have been a little hard on the man. Here, I don't smoke anymore anyway. Give him the whole pack. Thanks. How do I break- I wish I- I'm afraid- How yeah, do I- Yeah, I'm okay, so he doesn't Thanks know. For Thank you. All right, so let's leave the room. That's really, that is really eerie, guys. Mr. Gould? She returns. Say, can you spare a few? I spare it. Uh, the cigarette. You want a cigarette? Yes, I want a cigarette. It's a disgrace that I should have to beg for one. Mm, okay, so I'll we will. I'll talk to you later. So we will have to. It looks like a pack of cigarettes. It, because it most likely Joseph is. Joseph Mitchell wanted you to have this. Ah, a nice contribution to the Joe Gould Fund. Will you talk to us now? Mr. Gould? She returns. Say, can you spare a few dollars for the Joe Gould Fund? I'm afraid I'm a little short. Fair enough, fair enough. Hmm, his cigarette. Liking your cigarette? It's delightful. Here, feel free to join me. Uh, thanks, but I don't smoke. You might as well keep it. When a man is rich, he can afford to be generous. Mm -hmm, I'll talk to you him. later. Sure, sure, sure. Things to do, people to see. Yeah, you understand, that's cool, but... It's burning, but it's not getting any shorter. If I was a smoker, I'd be in heaven. Okay, uh, can we use it on ourselves? No, we can't. In, in the last game, we could with Auntie. Okay, let's try is this. Is this warm enough? Warm, safe. Ominous. There's nothing in the oven now. So we broke? There's nothing in that oven. Okay, so we broke the link. Did we? Apparently we did. I can't explain it, but I have the feeling that my time in this place is ending. I'm breaking the link. It'll all be over soon. Over, yes. 
I can't say that I ever understood any of this, but I do know one thing. Gould was right. We are connected. Every single person on the planet. It's a pattern so complex that we can't even begin to understand it. So don't try to understand it. Gould tried, and he lived a miserable life. Just live, and be happy in living. Anyhow, you best get going. You got a job to finish. Okay, if you say so. Let's talk to Madeline about this. This place is starting to fade. That's good, right? Once this place is gone, the link is gone too. The killing will stop. This means something to you, the killing. She killed someone right in front of me. I want to stop that from happening again. Imagine that. Genuine heart. Your predecessor was not graced with such compassion. Predecessor? Do you mean Lauren? My Auntie Lauren? We should not stay here. This place will soon cease to be. Come. It's broken! The bond is broken! I'm free! Way to go, Red. My head. I understand everything. Everything? I hurt people. Yes, that was you. But look, whatever happened, it's done. You can't do anything about it now. It's time for you to move on. No, this should not have happened. He will not kill again. Hey! What? Okay. It's about time you got back here. What did you guys do? I did it, Joey. I broke the bond. Yeah, you broke it all right, and our friend just blew. She did not enter the white light? No. Oh, that is a problem. She has free will and is loose in the world. With the power she has, who knows what damage she can cause. Great, just great. I don't know who you are, lady, and I don't care. But just leave the spook work to us, okay? I have little choice in the matter. I am bound to this plane. What happens next is up to you. Wait! Let's get out of here. Okay, this took a turn here. Whoa, little dizzy. Careful, kid. You've never been under for that long. At least I'm alive. Yeah, everything's peachy. There's a killer ghost on the loose and it's our fault. But we broke the link. She doesn't have to kill anymore. You want to tell her that? Who would she want to kill anyway? I think she's going to kill Charlie Meltzer. Oh, him. The guy who wants me dead. Yeah, ironic as all get out. We'll sort it out later. Let's get going. Alright, guys, but I'm kind of sorry because I feel like we are nearing the finale. And, of course, we are also nearing the end of the episode mark. So, if you want to know what's going to happen next... You'll have to tune in next time for the Blackwell Convergence. See you then.